Uh, one of the biggest things for me, aside from the historical aspect, was um, a, part, a part of history for myself. So there's a church in Savannah, Georgia called First African Baptist Church. And this church was built in 1859 by slaves. And on the side of the pews is Hebrew writing. Um, it is a mixture of Hebrew Latin writing. It's called Landino, right? And uh, the Landino is Hebrew Latin. Why? Because Spain and Portugal, right? And uh, the Hebrew language was not revived until, according to America, I think 1881, right? So this is roughly 30 years beforehand. So who taught them how to do this? When you look at this writing, you know, why is it that this Landino is being spoken with. As you just saw in that clip, the Christian battle rapper known as Street Hymns has recently stated that a major factor in his adoption of an Israelite identity was the belief that Hebrew appears on the pews at First African Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, to be fair, he also said uh, Ladino and he described it as a mix of Hebrew and Latin. Uh, so it seemed worthwhile to revisit uh, an important point that many had missed, which is that the extant evidence points to the conclusion that the belief that Hebrew appears on the pews is a recent innovation dating to sometime around the early noughties, which is to say the, the early part of the first decade of the 2000s. Uh, and so you're going to see that in this video. I'd, I'd like to add one thing since he mentioned Ladino that uh, while it's not going to be covered in detail in this video, it doesn't seem that anyone had proposed Ladino for the pews until perhaps 2020, but we'll cover that in a future video. Whatever the case, uh, enjoy this short video and uh, come to your own conclusions. God bless. I know I've been inactive for about a month now. Uh, you know, honestly, I've uh, been quite busy offline and I, I remain busy, so I'm going to continue to be somewhat inactive, but I hope to get back into the swing of things soon, maybe, I don't know, in the next few weeks or something like that. But whatever the case, in the meantime, I wanted to put out a really quick video which shares a brief thought on a couple of things I've recently seen. Uh, perhaps we might consider this a small yet potentially significant piece of the larger puzzle, which is the ongoing discussion about the pews. Uh, the first thing I want to touch on is this public Facebook post I came across while doing a keyword search for posts relevant to the topic of the markings on the pews at First African Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, a woman who had apparently visited the church multiple times in her life was posting her thoughts on Henry Louis Gates' recent documentary for PBS titled The Black Church, uh, which had a brief segment on the pews. What caught my eye uh, in particular was a comment the author made in the comment section of the thread. While at the start of the thread, she noted a more recent visit to the church in which the tour guide claimed Hebrew and Aramaic appeared on the pews, she recounted an earlier visit her first visit when she was a kid and noted that back then, quote, folks at the church were like, no, it's just drawings, end quote. Her claim struck me as interesting as here we have an apparent witness to a time from decades ago when some at the church were simply describing the markings as drawings and not ident identifying them with a specific language. Now, you can interpret that however you wish, but I personally found it interesting. And moreover, the statement began to strike me as even more interesting shortly thereafter when I recently watched an interview on the Boom Church YouTube account. Uh, the video is from the 31st of May, and it's titled Interview, Islamic Historian Amir Muhammad, Slaves Weren't Illiterate. I'll share a link in the video description. Now, the reason why I say a portion of that interview uh, is relevant to the Facebook post we just looked at is because the gentleman being interviewed is also familiar with the church, has also had some experience with the church decades ago, and seems to provide secondary independent witness to a different description of the pews being prevalent back then, you know, in decades past. So the brief clip I wanna look at begins at the 58 minute and uh, 15 second mark of the video. Now, as you listen to this short clip, listen closely to what he says about how the markings were described in the past. As I stated earlier, there's a church in Savannah, Georgia on the second mm -hmm. floor. All of its pews, as this, what they would when uh, in the seventies they used to call it African scribble scrap. Now they call it Arabic script or Jamie so, script. Yeah. 
Okay, so those two claims strike me as especially fascinating when they are juxtaposed, you know, when you put them side by side. As, like I said, we seem to have two different independent witnesses to a past from decades ago when the markings were being described differently, when they were perhaps not being described as Hebrew. Uh, one person remembers them being described as mere drawings, and uh, another remembers them being described as, quote, African scribble scrabble, end quote. You know, for me, that raises a couple important questions. The first question is this, how old is the claim that cursive Hebrew appears on the pews? Now, of course, I'm confident that some of the current proponents of the claim that Hebrew appears on the pews will insist that people have always known this to be the case. And thus they'll claim or at least insinuate that you know, that the tradition of Hebrew on the pews goes all the way back to when the markings were first made. You know, they'll say it goes all the way back to when the, the pews were built. Uh, however, in light of recent controversies, I personally am not so confident that we can simply take certain person's uh, word for it, if you know what I mean. And that brings up a second question. What is the earliest recording of someone making that claim? In other words, people can assure us all they want that the claim that Hebrew, you know, is on the pews has always existed since the 19th century for 150 years or maybe more, right? But it's more interesting to ask what is their earliest recording of the claim? whether in the form of a website or the printed word or maybe somebody's journal or a video, you know, a radio broadcast, something, you know? Now, as a disclaimer, that's not to say that the claim could not exist before our earliest extant recording of somebody making it, but it would at least be interesting if it turns out that we do not have evidence in favor of the claim existing before a certain point especially in light of the recollections just shared, which seem to show that as recently as, say, 40 years ago or so, you know, a little bit more than 30, 40 years ago, there was a, a, they were being described in a different way. The markings were being described in a different way. Uh, and it's here that I would invite others to contemplate the obvious disconnect from the alleged language on the pews, assuming there's language on the pews. Now, this has relevance here, and it also is going to have relevance to some other subtopics pertaining to the pews, so this issue of this disconnect is likely to come up in future videos on the subject, so you know, stay tuned for that. But, but getting back to this subject, what I'm referring to is the disconnect which is implied by no one knowing what the marking state. You know, some might want to object that, uh, you know, a friend of ours claims that an irregular spelling of Yisrael appears on a pew. And uh, not only that, not too long ago, there was also the claim that a pew declared something along the lines of, quote, take grasp of Yah Israel with a bass voice, end quote. But those are very, very recent speculations, which were arrived at literally in the last few months. You know, it's not like those are parts of traditions which stretch all the way back to the mid 19th century. And in fact, one of the proponents of those claims had himself said before those recent speculations arose that no one had been able to translate any part of the pews. And he is also on record, you know, himself very recently in 2019, saying that he himself could not identify any words. He couldn't identify a single word. So, you know, again, these recent attempts to show what's on the pews are, are not parts of traditions that stretch back, rather they're, you know, very recent developments. And the reason why this is relevant is because, you know, if we put aside those recent speculations, and get back to the point of no one being able to translate the pews and one of the more visible proponents saying, you know, not so long ago that he couldn't even identify a single word, you know, and this was the the, the state of the pews as, as recently as like uh, mid 2020, <laughs> you know, that implies a disconnect from the language on the pews, assuming there is language on the pews. And what I mean is, there are those who will claim that his, it has always been known that there's Hebrew on the pews, yet somehow this allegedly continuous line of tradition didn't bring the knowledge of what that Hebrew states with it. That has to be described as a disconnect. Now, another objection that I can anticipate is some might object by recalling that a little over a decade ago, there was a DVD in which one person claimed that the markings might be translated, quote, to secure a desired harvest, to enter a pathway into a household, end quote. But 
you know, honestly, even there, no one has been able to point to a string of Hebrew characters on any of the pews, which might be translated that way. You know, in that regard, it's honestly a bit like uh, our friends recently claiming that Take Grasp of Yah, Israel with a bass voice, appeared on the pew, yet likewise couldn't produce the precise string of Hebrew characters behind that alleged English translation. And that is an example of what I would call a disconnect. If you have the markings and you have an English translation of the Hebrew that allegedly appears in those markings, yet you can't point to the actual Hebrew itself, that is a huge disconnect. And we know that some of these unsupported English translations are recent innovations. For example, again, that take grasp of Yah Israel line was a recent innovation. And so with that in mind, it's possible that the line about securing a harvest is likewise a recent innovation and not something rooted in, you know, a 150 year old tradition. Now, to tie that back in with the Facebook post and interview clip shown earlier in this video, perhaps the claim that Hebrew appears on the pews is itself a relatively recent innovation. Like, not only are the attempted translations recent innovations, perhaps the claim about Hebrew on the pews is, is itself a recent innovation. And the reason why we can entertain this possibility is because we have people who seem to remember a time, you know, in the not so distant past, when the markings were being described rather differently. And when we come to the subject of no one being able to translate the alleged Hebrew on the pews, one might object that it's at least possible that, you know, a group can know that there's Hebrew there, yet slowly lose their ability to read it over time. And sure, I'd say, I'd agree, that's possible. It's possible for you to know there's language here, but you know, over the generations, you and your family slowly lose, you know, the ability to read that, that can happen. However, and this is relevant to this video, it's also possible that another explanation for what's going on here is that the claim of Hebrew being on the pews was itself adopted more recently. And that proponents of that view are trying to collectively develop it and support it since it was adopted. You know, and interestingly, we see development along those lines unfolding in real time. Uh, for example, claiming that you know, that the alleged curse of Hebrew is more specifically solitreo, seems to be a recent development. Uh, claiming certain markings read, you know, for, as we said before, take grasp of Yah Israel with a bass voice. That's definitely a recent development. Claiming an irregular spelling of Yisrael with five yods, a Zion, and no Aleph is definitely a recent development. So the claims are evolving, and the attempts to provide examples in favor of the claims are very recent developments. So, you know, if the arguments in favor of Hebrew on the pews are recent innovations, then the claim of Hebrew appearing on the pews itself might itself be a recent development, a recent innovation, you know, food for thought. Uh, on a closing note, uh, one might object that, you know, by these standards, so too the claim that Arabic appears on the pews might likewise be described as a, a, a recent development. And uh, honestly, I would agree. You, you could raise the same charge. Uh, so too, one might object that just because a claim was arrived at recently, that does not mean it's false. In other words, uh, Hebrew or Arabic or some other language might actually appear on a pew, even if people only recently started claiming such, you know, even if it's only a relatively recent claim. Again, I would agree. But the point that I want to make here, you know, as I close this video, is that there are certain folks who insinuate that, you know, among the different language claims that we should simply defer to the claim that Hebrew appears on the pews because that claim has existed continuously with the church since its beginnings. However, that sort of argument merely begs the question, is this tradition about Hebrew on the pews really that old? Does it really stretch back to the beginnings of the church? And are we merely expected to just take certain folks word for it when they make this claim about how long the tradition has been around you know when you look at the sort of statements that we saw at the beginning of this video it seems possible that the claim is not as old as some have been telling us again food for thought as a bit of an epilogue i'd like to share that after making the video you just saw i looked into this a bit more trying to search for various sources discussing the markings on the pews 
So I'd like to share what I've found with you now. I'll put some excerpts from various books and articles on the screen, and the precise sources will also be listed in the video description. Of course, you can also pause your video if you wish to take a closer look at what appears on the screen, as we'll be running through some of the sources quite quickly. So I came across a book from 1994, which claimed that the markings were the signatures of those who had worked on the pews. Then I came across an article in the Florida Times Union from February of 1998, which described them as African tribal markings. Another article in the Washington Post from August of that same year, which is uh, to say 1998, uh, likewise described them as tribal markings representing the signatures of those who made the pews. Then there is a 2003 article from the magazine Southern Living, which once again described them as tribal markings. Uh, so too, there was a book from 2005, which also described them as tribal markings and added that such markings were, you know, that they formed a kind of common language. Uh, yet another book from 2006, likewise made reference to tribal markings with the added detail that they conveyed six different languages. I actually wrote to one of the co-authors of that book and she informed me that the statement was repeating what a tour guide had at the church had said back then, you know, back when the, when the book was being written. So with all of that before us, here's, a, here's the impression that I got from the various sources we consulted, you know. So here's a rough timeline of the claims uh, over the recent decades. So first, as was covered in the beginning, uh, in the 1970s, and perhaps so to the 1980s, the markings were described as, quote, African scribble scrabble, or uh, also as drawings. Uh, then in the 90s and the early noughties, uh, which is to say the early part of the first decade of the 2000s, they were described as African tribal markings and even like a type of signature, uh, the signatures of people who built the pews. Uh, and then in the mid to late noughties, again, the, the mid to late uh, 2000s, uh, the sources uh, begin to make more explicit references to languages, right? And it's around this time that I find the earliest references to Hebrew. And then, as you know, there are others uh, who also go on to propose uh, Aramaic, uh, Arabic, or Giz. Whatever the case, at this point, it seems to me like the various sources capture a sort of evolution in the claims about the markings on the pews, with the claim of specifically Hebrew coming up in the early 2000s. However, I admit that that is uh, highly speculative, and thus, if we stopped here, the proposal just made should be considered to, as having a, a reasonable margin of error, perhaps a significant margin of error. But then I came across another source, which seemed to corroborate the conclusion I was tentatively inferring from the other sources I consulted. An article from August of 2008 in a British newspaper, the Daily Telegraph, stated the following regarding the markings on the pews at First African Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia. Quote, for many years, these marks were a puzzle, but it is now thought that they may be cursive Hebrew, end quote. That line struck me as quite a strong piece of evidence as we have an article from the late noughties, uh, which is again to say the, the late 2000s, precisely at the time that we seem to see the claims of Hebrew appear in the available sources. And that article alludes to the conclusion that the marking, you know, this conclusion that the markings are Hebrew was at that time only recently arrived at. In short, this article from 2008 seems to corroborate the speculation that the claim of Hebrew on the pews was a recent innovation dating to the first decade of the 21st century. Now, of course, the discussion does not stop here. You know, perhaps others can bring different lines of evidence to the table and we can continue to explore the subject. You know, on our end, we're, we are certainly going to continue to look into this matter. But uh, as was stated earlier, at this point, we should not be expected to just take someone's word for it when they assert that the claim of Hebrew on the pews has always existed with the church. That doesn't seem to be the case when we're examining the available evidence. Food for thought. On that note, God bless. I like something the other brother said, and he was he brought up the thing. Shout out to Abu, shout out to Faithful. He brought up something about them pews, and he was talking about them pews. Boy, dialogue got to go on. He said, how long these people been saying this Hebrew? You can't come and tell me this one thing about no pew. Yeah, I'm going to bring them up too. You can't tell me one thing when somebody said it was this, somebody said it was that, somebody else said it was this. No, a lot of y'all got agenda.